How's it going everybody? My name is Alex McGregor and I've gotten this request a few times recently. So this is going to be a Milky Way editing video. And I'm going to show you how to turn this series of images right here into this final product. Let's get to it. So I got all of these images loaded up into Lightroom. I'll show you how I process them through Lightroom and then combine them in Photoshop. So opening Lightroom now, I shot these images as a panorama and I really like doing vertical panoramas because it just gives you more, uh, more space to work with, I feel like. So we will combine these for the foreground and the only edit that I'm doing to these is a lens correction edit. That's just because there can be some vignetting up in the corners. This lens correction fixes that vignetting and will make for a nicer panorama. So clicking on this first one, I made that edit, synced it all the way through all of these. I'm holding shift and clicking this last one, getting hit edit in, and then merge to panorama in Photoshop. You want to make sure all your images are there and have this blend images together. And I'm just going to go with auto because it will do what it knows is best. And then we can manipulate a little bit of how the image looks later. So click OK. It looks pretty scary so far, but we know uh, Photoshop will fix up those harsh edges. And there we go. There is our foreground panorama. Uh, this was shot with a long exposure, so the stars over above it uh, are all blurry. But it is nice to have the view of the Milky Way there because then you know where to put your tracked Milky Way on top of it. So we're going to jump back into Lightroom and do the same thing with our sky images. Real quick, I'll go over. I shot these sky images in two rows. So I started left, worked my way right with just a little bit of foreground in there. And then I went up one. You can see Jupiter moved a little ways across the screen and I came back. So a total of 10 images for this panorama. So I'm going to select everything from the sky, right click, edit in, merge to panorama in Photoshop. Again, blend images is selected, auto layout, and let's go. All right, now Photoshop is done making our panorama here. So we have two different tabs that are open now, one with our foreground and one with our sky. I am going to grab my crop tool real quick on this foreground image. I'm gonna clean up some of the bottom and the edges but then I'm going to drag the top of it up a little bit to make sure we have enough room to put our new sky in. Now on our sky image, I like how everything came together. So I'm going to flatten this image out over on the layers panel here. I have every one of them selected. I'm just going to hit right click merge layers. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer so we can do some adjusting on it and not ruin our base image. I don't love how the panorama has these wings on it. I'd like to tighten that up a little bit. So I'm gonna warp this by hitting Command T, which brings up our transform tool. And then up here at the top, we're gonna choose our warp option. And I just like to bring these edges back in and up a little bit. If we go too far, you'll get some weird distortion, but I know we can definitely get some better shapes on this image. Okay, then we'll use our crop tool to get rid of all the dead area around it. All right, I'm also gonna duplicate this layer again. Now we have our image and we can really get down to business with editing it. So the first thing I like to do is jump into our camera raw filter. In here, we can get the image really close and then do a little bit of stretching with layers when we're done here. So the first thing I want to do is check the color. So I'm going to boost these all the way up 
and it looks like we're really blue. So I'm gonna warm this up a little bit. I like having pretty much an orange core with a blue sky, and I love how this air glow is going, this magenta and green. So I'm not gonna play with the tint at all. I'm just gonna bring these sliders back down a bit. Now, I like the exposure. It is slightly off to the left side, but that's just fine. So I'm gonna add some contrast by dropping our blacks. Increasing our whites just a little bit. Increasing our shadows. And right now I am making kind of a washed out image. Decrease our highlights. But we will fix that soon. I just don't want to destroy any of the data. As far as the texture clarity dehaze, these are powerful. So you should use them with caution. When I'm editing, I'm going for detail in the gassy areas and trying to reduce the appearance of the stars. So I'm going to drop my texture a bit and increase my clarity a bit. And you can use your dehaze, just be careful with it because you can see it is a very powerful little feature. So I'll go about 20. I think I want to warm things up a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking nice. On our curves, we can increase the contrast a little bit by doing just a really classic S-curve here. I think that looks pretty nice. Detail, I avoid all of this. Um, color grading is where you can get really interesting in, or a color mixer. You can select really specific colors and adjust them differently. So for example, we can adjust the green. I'm going to add some saturation and we drop the luminance just a little bit. And we can go to magenta. I kind of want to make this air glow really pop. Just be careful because you can add so much noise if you get too over the board, over the top with this. See like there just looks noisy. Just a little saturation. And a little luminance. And that's all I'm gonna do in here for now, but we can see the difference that Camera Raw made. It adds a bunch of color and some good uh, contrast to the image. Now I'm going to open up a levels adjustment. I'm going to bring this black edge in to add some contrast. Then I'm going to bring this mid-tones up, add a little bit of detail back into the gassy areas. Drop this again. Because it's kind of compressed on here, these stars are really popping out. So I'm going to do a quick star reduction here. And I'm going to do the minimum filter technique. So I'm going to select my color range. I'm going to choose my highlights here. And I'm going to play around with these sliders until I'll, I've selected a lot of the stars. I'm going to modify my selection by going to select, modify, expand. I'm going to expand by one pixel. I'm going to Go to select, modify feather. I'm gonna feather by 0.5 of a pixel. I'm gonna hit command H, which will hide those marching ants, but those selections are still there. Now to reduce the overall uh, size and visibility of the stars, I'm gonna go to filter, other, and minimum. And I'm going to choose a radius of one pixel. Well, let's see what two pixels looks like. Two pixels is a little extreme, but I'll show you a way that we can adjust exactly how much of this effect we want. So two pixels was definitely too much. It gave us a lot of weird artifacting, but we can bring those stars back by um, going to our top layer here that we just applied those adjustments to, hitting opacity, and bringing the opacity of this layer back down. 
Now we're starting to reintroduce some of those stars and here's where we can get exactly how many stars we want from no stars to full stars. We're gonna go somewhere in the middle here. About there looks good. So now I'm going to combine these two layers. And I am going to duplicate this again. So I have a lot of different stages of the edit saved here. We can see all the way from the very first one to the warped one to the uh, edit through camera raw and then our star reduction there. Now on this one, I can do a little bit of dodging and burning, which is over here on your tools panel. We see that the burn tool will selectively darken an area in the image. So I want to bring out more of these gases. So I'm choosing the shadows and I'm going to set my exposure to 4%. I'm just going to draw over the core and over this line of gas going out to Antares. See how that's just making those shadows pop out a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the opposite, the dodge tool to the mid tones exposure again at four. I'm going to draw all over the core of the Milky Way and combining these just adds some really nice texture and dimension to your image. I'm also going to do this to the highlights, brighten them up a little bit. I really like brightening the areas behind the gas because it makes the gas stand out a lot better. And now it looks like I had a little bit of an issue with this frame right here. We can see the stars are a lot nicer right next to it. So whatever happened here is causing me some problems. So I'm also going to use this burn tool to make those stars not so uh, noticeable by choosing my highlights. I'm going to bring that up to about 30. I'm just going to brush over this area. Now it's not actually getting rid of the stars, but it is going to make them less uh, distracting. So it's kind of a cheating fix, but it works pretty well right there. And I'm going to do it a little bit out on this far edge here. All right, so that is how I edit my skies. Now let's combine these two images together. If you wanna see my three favorite ways for combining track skies with the foreground, you can click on this video right here. So for this edit, I'm going to use the quick selection tool to drag along the horizon and then use a layer mask to get rid of the sky. Now I did say I was gonna use a layer mask, but I've actually changed my mind on that. I'm going to use the eraser tool uh, because there's some really nice glow coming from this right side. And I don't want to completely get rid of that because that'll help make our uh, blend a little bit better. So what I'm doing instead is I'm just going to reduce the hardness and the size of my eraser here. And I'm gonna get close, but not all the way down to the edge. So this will leave some of that nice glow from the town coming up. All right, gonna hit Command D to deselect. Fit this on screen, looks like it is. So I'm gonna go over, grab my sky, which, yeah, is all contained in this top layer right here. Gonna bring it in, drop it right over the top. Use my move tool to position it right. I wanna make sure everything's lined up right about there. I'm gonna drag it to the bottom to hide it behind. And there we go. That's looking really nice. Now I can use my crop tool to get my edges all right. 
Now, the nice thing about this is that we're still working with two different layers. So now that I have my sky here, I can use that as a reference for editing my foreground. You can see there's a little bit of a difference in the overall feel. So I'm gonna edit my foreground again in camera raw. One thing I know I wanna warm it up just a tad to make it match the sky color. Also I'm gonna increase the shadows to bring back a little bit of detail in that foreground. I'm gonna drop my highlights cause all the town and the cat lights are really strong. So we're gonna manage them a little bit add a little bit of texture and a, drop the clarity. I like dropping it because it kind of gives everything a little bit of a ethereal glow. Is that even a word I can use? I don't know. And same with the dehaze, drop that down just a little bit and bring my blacks back. So there's our before and after, not a huge difference, just warmed it up some and gave us some nice glow around these car lights. All right, now that's looking pretty good. I would say maybe the sky is a little bit too saturated. So I'll open up a hue and saturation here. Just kind of drop. Yeah, it's fun to go crazy, but gotta be a little realistic. Drop that down a little bit. And I'm also gonna drop the lightness of it just a smidge. And it looks like I have a couple of dust spots here. I'm gonna fix these dust spots by just using the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna grab next to it and move it over. Oh, make sure we have our layer selected. There we go, got rid of one. And got rid of two. And there you have it. So that's my process for how I edit the night sky in the foreground and blend them together there. Um, it was pretty simple stuff, but I am primarily using camera raw and a couple like layers and saturation things. And then that dodge and burn through the core to really make it pop. So I hope this has helped you to get an idea of how you want to take your editing. And if you've enjoyed it at all, I would really appreciate that thumbs up and comment any questions or any of your favorite tools that I might not have used here. Uh, if you'd like to get more one-on-one -on -one training for using your Move Shoot Move or anything photography related, I have one-on-one -on -one classes over Zoom available. Um, also have a buy me a coffee in case you've enjoyed this. All kinds of stuff are down in those links, affiliate things and whatnot. So hope you've enjoyed it. My name again is Alex McGregor and I'll see you next time.